Hello, my name is Dr. Luis Castro, and I am a heart surgeon practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area. I consider myself, along with my entire team, expert in adult mitral and aortic valve operations. You are likely to have been told that you have a heart condition called mitral regurgitation or a leaky mitral valve and that you may require an operation to repair this sometime soon. These operations are performed around the country, around the world, with many different levels of expertise and because of that with different outcomes and results, some better than others. They can be performed through what are called minimally invasive approaches, including robotic assistance, small incisions along the chest wall, or so-called mini thoracotomy and port access, or through a small incision in front of your chest, called a mini sternotomy. Here's what you need to know and the questions you should be asking. Surgeons and centers with less experience performing fewer than 50 mitral valve operations a year are less likely to have the necessary skill that it takes to repair your valve reliably compared to those with more experience and higher mitral valve volume. Experience here is priceless. You should demand data on volume specific to mitral valve repair, demand to see the actual numbers. It's even more important if you're considering a robotic type operation. Has the surgeon done six of them this way, or has he or she done 200 this way? Tremendous differences in level of experience can make the difference between repairing your valve and needing to replace it, and possibly whether you survive an operation. The four most important questions in order of importance that you need answered from any heart surgeon about any procedure or operation are simple. The first most important question. Am I going to survive this operation? The second most important question. Is this operation going to work? And for how long? The third most important question. Are there other complications related to this operation? Last but not least, by the way, how do you do this operation? I'm going to go through these questions one by one and answer them as if we were speaking to each other in person in my office. You have a leaky mitral valve. You may have symptoms or maybe your heart chambers are now enlarged and it's time to find out more about surgery. Most important question, am I going to survive this operation? In our hands, absolutely. Age does matter a whole bunch, but in our hands, patients under the age of 80 that underwent isolated mitral valve repair, about 600 patients for us now had a 0% 30-day mortality. Nobody died. And at follow-up with many of our patients years out from their operation, in a recent study and review, we contacted our patients, everyone is still alive. A robotic operation at another center may have one or two deaths in a hundred. That's a one to two percent risk of death and that's not acceptable to me. I lose my enthusiasm for robotic surgery when your life or my brother's life is at stake. The risk should be near zero percent. Second question, is this operation going to work and for how long? If your valve can be repaired, the vast majority of patients should enjoy a wonderful life free of additional heart operations. We as surgeons all have different repair rates. You should seek surgeons with the most experience who have data to back up their experience and claims and who can offer reliable repair 95% of the time. This is your life. Third question, are there other complications related to this operation? Unfortunately, nothing that we do in medicine and surgery is without the potential for complications. Any surgery involves risk. Therefore, you should not have an operation unless it is absolutely necessary. Thankfully, we do live in a day and age where open heart operations are done safely and with very, very few difficulties. Now, if your valve needs to be replaced because the surgeon cannot repair it, you need to consider choice of valve for replacement before the actual date of the operation. The choices are tissue or bioprosthetic, 
and mechanical or metal valves. Mechanical valves are very durable, lasting in many people a lifetime, but they require anticoagulation, blood thinning known as Coumadin therapy. This carries with it a small but real risk for major bleeding or hemorrhage for the remainder of your life. Because of this, it may require changes in lifestyle to minimize the possibility of serious bleeding. On the other hand, tissue valves don't require blood thinner or Coumadin therapy, but are less durable. So it may require a second operation down the road if you're under the age of 70 because eventually they wear out. Bottom line, there is no perfect valve replacement. Other complications. Well, in the robotic approach, although attractive and marketed as less invasive, has a set of other additional complications related to unintended injury to arteries in the leg that need to be manipulated at the time of operation, and to the main arterial pipe or aorta that may have disastrous outcomes for a patient if damaged. The last important question, how do you do this operation? A very safe way to do this operation is through a full chest incision dividing the breastbone in its entirety known as a sternotomy. Many surgeons do it this way safely. Our group has worked on doing these repairs in most people with minimally invasive techniques using smaller incisions with exactly the same safety profile compared to full sternotomy. We haven't compromised safety. We haven't compromised the ability to repair the mitral valve. We do these operations through mini incisions entering either through the upper or lower portion of the breastbone or through a mini right thoracotomy. This is a small incision under the right side of your chest hidden under the breast line and it's no bigger than, than the incision used for most robotic operations. For many the incisions are not visible and of course patients are extremely grateful. As a heart surgeon what I do every day is tremendously rewarding. I consider what I do a wonderful gift and not work at all. I'm going to share with you a story of a man in his mid-80s very complicated who had reached the end of his road with his mitral regurgitation. He was evaluated and hospitalized for several weeks at a major university center and was told that he was too frail to be helped and would not survive an operation to fix his valve. He was left to die. His son-in-law, who happens to be a heart surgeon from out of state, decided that wasn't good enough. So he called me to see what we could do to help his wife's dad. We transferred him to our hospital. We rounded up the family, and after a lot of serious thought and serious consideration, knowing that it wouldn't be easy, we operated on this man. Although his post-operative course was lengthy, he did go home. One year later, I was invited to join this wonderful man in his home to celebrate his 50th wedding anniversary, surrounded by his wife, his entire family, including grown children now, and grandchildren. The event was full of life, he was thriving, and the most beautiful moment that I will cherish forever came when each and every grandchild came to me, shook my hand, and thanked me for giving their grandfather this very, very special day. My name is Dr. Luis Castro. I hope this information has been helpful. Feel free to contact me if you have any additional questions.